All right, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. And brief introductions again, why not? Kylie, welcome. Hello, I'm Kylie Franzak. I am a first year PhD student at ASU. Um, Dr. Early is actually my mentor and um, AI is relatively new to me. So, but it's something that um, our director of writing programs at ASU talks about a lot. So it kind of piqued my interest. And so this is just a way for me to network and get to learn more about it. Cool, welcome. Nice to have you. David, what have you been up to? Um, you I'm, can introduce yourself too. Sorry, <laughs> I'm a, a former uh, writing teacher, and then worked for a long time in education technology and publishing, and literacy, and have worked with the Writing Project on technology projects over the years. And this is one more chance to be in that circle. Uh, what have I been doing recently? It's been reading a lot of the papers that have been coming out. Um, almost fast and furious about AI and the testing that's unfolding and what researchers are sharing about the large language models. Cool. And Christina and Jack. Sure. Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. I've got my Philadelphia Writing Project t-shirt on and I work for the National Writing Project. Um, and I just follow Paul around and learn <laughs> what he's working on. <laughs> cool, cool. Paul's a Pied Piper, I think. Johnny yeah, Apple's. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Jack. Uh, uh, hey, uh, I'm I'm Jack Marmerstein. I just follow Christina around and, and <laughs> it's learn like from a her. trail. Uh, I, I, I've I've been in that tech for a long time. I've never been a classroom teacher, but <clears throat> worked in and out of education for, for a while and and uh, and super curious about AI. I work in language education as well, and I'm curious about uh, generative AI and, and, and you know all, all sorts of things. And then have the, the the thinking partners, thought partners, writing partners have been uh, about as provocative as anything I've seen coming out of this work. So Paul, it's it's amazing what you're doing, and I I keep uh, I keep learning from it. Cool, cool. Thanks. So. Um one of the one of Christina's recommendations last week, um, <laughs> or, or thoughts, a fleeting thought maybe it was, um, was that uh, she said to Chris Sloan and myself, and Chris is babysitting tonight. He apologized, couldn't be here, but um, that he uh, that we maybe could put together a text set. Um, it has been called. We we just call them um, collections on the comment, but um, Chris in particular works with his students, um, especially in the spring, to put together, they themselves upload um, different points of view, articles and different media to a collection about an inquiry question that they have. So um, I started a text set to try to represent some different points of view. Um, I think I only got four things up there. I wanna suggest that we could kind of just go through the nuts and bolts of how to do that yourself and you could add something to it and then you could then play with AI around it. Does that some, sound like something worthy of you spending your time doing? <laughs> I need some feedback here. <clears throat> or, or what do you want to think about? That makes sense to me. Um, okay. and, and or, yeah. No, it just that it's it's hard content, so it's like going through it all. But um, but uh, you did you have particular reasons that, what you picked already, or did you just? So I was I was looking for like I, like some partisan points of view. Like I, I knew Democracy Now would have a perspective, and so I kind of looked around. And I don't know if I found that necessarily. And so maybe, you know, other people doing that would be great. And the idea of a, a collection being something that other people can add to is is kind of a new idea to some people, I think, on now comment. So that's <laughs> worth noting. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, maybe also, though, before we get to that, sorry, um, we could take a tour of this room. Would that be somewhat useful, I think. Yeah, we so didn't that, do that last week. 
Yeah, so let's do that. If you come over, uh, I, let's see. One way for you can do this is actually scroll across me and then try to follow me. Do you want me to scream the table throws No. Or, or you can just come over here to the first table. Come on over here. Yeah. And then click on that, click on that uh, image there. So this is the first Moloch and Moloch. This is tools, right? Does the image get big for you? Yeah. Yes. So it does. Okay. So just just so you know, I mean, I you know, I spent some time trying to reorganize, think this through, um, and we'll continue doing it. But I'm thinking that there are now these tools as thinking partners, right? You can do translation, you can get figurative language, you can start to make an image, you can do level adaptation, you can summarize, you can keyword extract. All right. So just and then hope. Yeah, go ahead. You you have SIF for reliability down underneath. What? Yeah, that was in there, but I thought it was more a simulator. <laughs> oh, I see. And so yes, okay. um, yeah, I haven't fixed that slide yet. Um, all right, fair enough. And so I'll, we'll just if you go up to table two, click on that one. Mm -hmm. We end up having fewer of these AI mentors, right? But there's a free writing mentor. What it does is it, and, and I also went through and said, because watching, um, what's her name <laughs> in Philadelphia? Um, oh, Roland? Um, Roland, sorry, Roland, Roland yeah. Roland. Uh, watching Roland, watching Roland with her students. Sorry, thank you for, I had a brain freeze up. Watching Roland and her students just choose anything it seemed to me we needed this in print. You'll see that you could use this this one for a text or this one for a published text. Beginning to distinguish between those, um, I'm st starting to, but some of them work for both. So for your just, or a peer's that. text, I see, for your text or a peer's for published text. Right. All right. Well, yeah, the text, right. So those are the three we have under mentor and table three. And so just to identify as when you click on the, the um, Ask AI, these come up in these categories. So that's why I'm sort of introducing them to you. Mm -hmm. um, click on this one. You'll see we have many more tutors. Tutors provide direct instruction. Um, NewsHound has been used a lot. But out of Jessica's work, um, the plot and then I actually, I don't know which one stage. Some of these come out of Jessica's work and, and some, um, with the turning point essay. But anyway, so these are here. Many of them are for text, for published text. Fair enough. I, I, I'm trying to whip through these. Um, table four is coach and David's uh, writing coach is there. Um, if you look at that, and actually, Christina's yeah. Yogi yeah, coach is there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what's also there, just to say, is the digital discourse um, moves for digital mm -hmm. discourse, the social <laughs> annotation, social making. So that that kind of thing is there, and you'll see these are these would be used for text about your teaching, if you're about that. teaching. Yeah. Right. Um, table five, teammates. Surprised that there were so many after kind of categorizing these, but um, thinking mm -hmm. so, think they're about collaborative work together. So these would help you work collaboratively, right? Um, so the the um, prompts say things like, imagine you're in a small group of a reading group or a writing group, and talk to us as a group, kind Great. of. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Um, six, table six, I, is, I, I mentioned last week, this is the one that to my mind is the most sort of interesting <laughs> to be thinking about. And we only, I only have two examples here and I, I would love for other people to make these, but it's, you create, you create a situation where the AI is a student. So in this, there are two cases. One is you make a statement and then you ask the AI to say if it's true or false. 
and you tell AI that it's a sixth grader or a fifth grader or whatever you want to tell it, and it, it adjusts its language and ways of thinking. And then there's a short answer student there as well. You want to think more about what that will be, what that one will do. And then seven is the simulator, right? And that's sort of way back, we sort of started with, you know, the um, Deborah Eipelman's Marxist and feminist and re re reader response. So those are kind of simulators. Um, another one here, though, you mentioned, you talked about, or so we talked about SIFT earlier. Um, so, and then there's breaking it down, which um, acts like a teacher and says, okay, I'm going to break down this first sentence. And then it, it defines each, and then at the end it says, okay, now you go do it. And that's the general approach. It's like, here's, here's how I think because I'm a school board member. Um, now you go and think the same way I think, right? Fair enough? Okay. Don't want to be more didactic about that, but because I, I do think we can play with them and see how they work, but any thoughts or questions as you see these? Or are we putting like things in the wrong categories or <laughs> anyway, are they useful categories or what are you thinking at this point around all that? So I'm just trying to imagine what I would do next. So one, so let, let's say I pick, um the only way forward right mm -hmm. and then i would think about what category i want to sort of approach a piece of the text like yeah not necessarily so yeah so why don't we do that why don't we read do you want do you want to read the same text or do you want to read a different text and then I'll give an example. I'm up for the same one because it's helpful to hear okay. people's feedback. That's my my thought. Others? I agree. I agree. I think the same text would be easier to work off of. Okay. So I'm going there. and um, But you can go there too. Hopefully you're logged in. And I'll share my screen and you'll, you'll find what you're doing on your own screen. All right? Yeah. Um, present. Uh, okay. Just to say, I chose this one because I thought it was going to say the only way forward is to get rid of Hamas. Um, and it does, but it's kind of complicated. I'll, I'll set that up. So, yeah. Um, I was looking for that position. But, okay, so I'm, I'm opening the only way forward. I think the, honestly, to answer your question, I think the first thing, and I think we should actually practice this, is that we go through and we read, let's say, let's say the first seven paragraphs, and we'll give ourselves time to do that, and just annotate a couple of things there, or one or two things there yourself, and don't worry about AI first, okay? Because okay. that's good practice for students, too. Is that fair? Everyone have it? Yes. Okay. And Paul, just so I've, I've yeah. opened it up in this, I've opened it up in a separate window. So annotation, yes. we're just going to highlight and then just add a comment to the right pane, right? And yes. So I, I'm, and Kylie may not be familiar, or others watching this might not also. So I'll, I'll just briefly say, you have a couple of choices. You can click on as you hover across a sentence. It turns light blue or yellow, I'm not sure. Um, you double click on it, and then you have a summary box at the top where you, you're limited to 255 words, and then a box below where you can add as much as you'd like. There's also a place to add an image and a video, but just let's just keep it with text probably tonight. So you, you can either choose a sentence, or you can go out here and choose the number, double click on it, and comment that way. And then you, then you get the whole paragraph. Um, the, uh, 
the article is short enough that you can comment on the whole article too, but let's do paragraph by paragraph. Okay. All right. I will shut up for five minutes and you'll read as much as you can in the first seven paragraphs.
como... Um, I'm back together in two minutes, maybe. Or... Should say that um, if you want to see what other people are doing, you, you need to refresh your browser and then you'll see other comments there. All right, let's talk a little bit. What was that like? What are you thinking? This is a workshop, so you didn't get as much time as you might have to read. But and Kylie, were you able to annotate, or I just want to check? Are you, you're just waiting, or I sorry, I was I was reading first, and then I was okay. going to go back to, and then I realized that I couldn't because I don't have an account. So oh. I'm currently making the account right now. Okay, great. And it's a public document, so you should be able to get to it once okay. you once you do. Great, great. Um, that's that's all good. Um, and yeah. So, other thoughts, questions about how this works? We're good. Let me ask a question, <laughs> and then see what you're thinking. Um, are Jack and Christina still here? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, there you are. No, you were behind my, my shared screen. No. So as we're introducing AI stuff, how do we how do we make anyway, let's say you're given an hour to present something. How do you make sure that people understand that it starts with this dialogue and this this your own reading, your own thinking, and then moves out to the AI? I mean, we say that, <laughs> but I think I at least kind of rush to the AI when that's the topic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But David, you have said you have said very clearly also that it needs to be in the context of a, a young person's or anybody's reading and writing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it kind of gets it's a key question, right? I mean, ideally, so you're bringing something to the conversation. I mean, I, as I was reading this article, there's just so much information that's around us all the time. And this was adding new detail. And I was trying to connect what I was bringing to the article and what was this was adding to it. Mm -hmm. And um, just by virtue of absorbing a lot of things and it being a topic I'm following, I've got that going. But in classroom situations, doing the pre preloading and the warm up, so to speak, to get a student's orientation to what they know or what they don't know feels like it would be a very good piece of the workflow 
again, thinking like a teacher that eats up half the period. Um, and then the AI eats up the other half. So it just feels like it's just getting started. Uh, and so yeah, and then tomorrow you have to do state testing and then, you know. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's right. So, so, so yeah. figuring out that, you know, it's non-negotiable to have 20 minutes a day. I, I'm just, I'm always starting to think like a bell schedule person and a teacher in a classroom, which is a challenge. But I found this this article, like many of them, adding to what I thought I understood. Um, and I was about to go make an annotation about the way they frame the extent to which Hamas is intertwined into the Palestinian community. I've assumed it was, but it gives details I'd not read before. Mostly it sort of dismisses them as an as an unwelcome insurgent, right? And this one has mm -hmm. a paragraph that's quite pretty specific about its um, its connection. So there were a bunch of things that sort of added to that. Christina, your comment about the presidential stuff as well. Like there's a lot of things go, whoa. So there are lots of connections and I'm struck by the time it takes to organize that stuff. Back to your question, Paul. It takes a lot in real time to digest stuff that's coming back at us, annotate and sort of reframe it. Um, well, very this might be an example of like what it's like if you work in a small group, because yeah. he knows a lot more about this topic than I do. So he, those are his comments. So I'm not able, I'm reading this and that paragraph that he commented on, I was like, wait, I'm confused when I read that con that paragraph. And then he kind of started taking it apart in a way that, you know, anyway, so it's, sure. so like, I don't know, there might be something about working mm -hmm. in teams or reading. Or with a partner. Or yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, but the amount of information that we have available to ourselves in these moments is huge. It's just astounding. Hi, Jake. Welcome. Hey, we'll catch, you, we'll catch you up. Click on that. Click on that uh, graphic that you're on right there. You'll go to a collection, get logged in at now comment, and maybe you'll be able to join us here in a second. Um, cool. The the big yeah. graphic. Yes. Uh, nothing's happening. Uh, the one you're... Okay. <laughs> so the one the one you're sitting on, actually, if you can move off of it a little bit, then you can go up and see it. So... Oh. You don't worry about me. I'll just... I'll, uh, okay. I'll keep trying some stuff. I'll, I, I could just log into now, Okay, yeah. You can, and I'll, I'll send you a link. That'll work too. So, j getting our back around to, or anybody else have any questions or thoughts already? More than that? I want to get back around to Christina's question of, okay, now AI, what do I do? And I, let's treat, let's treat this as us, right? Um, how, how would, do you think we should jump into AI? And I don't have an, an answer to this. With these, let's just say the first seven paragraphs or even the seventh paragraph. Let's go to the seventh paragraph, right? Wait, what's and it? Wait, one, two. They're six. numbered there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Um, and just because I think there's a there's some, some of her main idea here is, is in that. So what can you imagine AI could do for you at this point? And I mean that honestly and clearly. And yeah, I'm going to wait for a second. <laughs> I guess it's not a clear question. Is that probably... <laughs> No, so, no, I'm reading yeah. it, Paul. Because I oh, you're I, reading. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want us to think of it from a teacher's point of view? What could AI do if you if your students are reading this, or or a kid's point no, of yeah, view? Fair question. No, I really want you to think about it as a reader. That's like, okay. what what kind of what kind of AI support or thought or pushing so do you think might be possible? Yeah. So here's one, not that I, so I sort of think like, okay, so what kind of picture of Hamas has been offered in the U.S. corporate media? Like, can you give me like a rundown? 
Sure. That would be just like one sort of background thing that might be useful. That's just okay. one example thought. So am I, I think, I, yeah, I'm still sharing screen. That might not be the most interesting one, but that's just a thought I have. My, mine, mine has little to do with your thought partners, but if I, if I had a, if I had a, a know everything machine, I'm very, I'm very curious about why she chose to call the war in 1973, the October war instead of the Yom Kippur war. I, I, I'm a Jew. It's, it's like, it sets off my spidey sentence. It's like, why are you not using the, the Jewish yes. term for that? The, the term that's commonly used, but you're taking away a Hebrew Jewish word and replacing it with a, with a calendar word. I'd ask if I if I asked if I could ask Chat GPT something and it could do some primary source research, you know, in a millisecond and look at a million sources, I'd say who who calls it the October War and who calls it the Yom Kippur War? Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, where, where is that sentence? That's in paragraph six. The one above it. Okay, yeah. I've, I've I've never heard it called the October War. I've only heard it called the Yom Kippur War, but I also right. probably consume disproportionately Jewish. Sources, although the Atlantic, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the New Yorker all call it the Yom Kippur War too. So it's not. It's it's. Uh, so if I, Wikipedia, also known as the Ramadan and the October War. All right. So, I'm. Go ahead. Yeah. Other thoughts. Um, I was going to say in paragraph seven. You know, the sentence. The only way forward is to try to understand how a negotiated peace can be carved out of the wake of the past this of the past week's violence <clears throat> my first thought was you know i would be asking that gpt to just give me as many summaries as the the two-state solution is something in the history of it is to summarize the contested history of that effort um Mm -hmm. So that I could just get a better baseline on where that so negotiated piece is going to begin from, and where it might, where it could possibly go. So um, let's take. Yeah, it, did I cut you off? Or? No, no. Okay, let's take these one at a time. I'm going yeah. to hi, I'm going to highlight Jack's or this sentence here since 1973. That's where it, it says the October War, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to double click on that sentence. I'm going to ask AI, I'm taking a big breath and trying to think through um, which one we would ask for here. And Is there like uh, a research assistant one? Like a yeah, yeah, that's fair. I, uh, I had to yeah. run off the library and do a bunch of primary source research for me. So there is a back, there is the, uh, the news hound. Do we use that? I don't know if that'll work, but let's try that. Oh, wait, there's the background. Wait, what is that one? News. Background knowledge tutor. Let's use that one. And let's say why. It's information to understand the text. Okay. That sound fair? I think. Let's see what happens. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, why do you... So ask the question again, Jack. Why do you use? Uh, wh I, I, uh, why is she, why is she referring? I, I thought I, I I thought this war was commonly known as the Yom Kippur War. Why is she using the October War to refer to it? Oh, Yom Kippur for me. Y O M. Yom is Y Y O M space K I P P U R. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a embedded in that name is the fact that is is the is the rage that Jews still hold that, that that they were attacked on the most sacred day of their year. They'll they'll remind everyone of that. October War neutralizes that. More a more neutral a more neutral a more neutral frame if you want a neutral frame. But uh, but I think I think it's commonly known as Yom Kippur War, just in general. Okay, you saw what I wrote here. Yeah, I could okay. write something different, but all right, hit, gonna hit continue. Um, I don't remember this quote. Three or four sentences. Yeah, is, all right. I'm reading what what the prompt says, right? Which is something we would teach students to do as well. Kind of understand what is being sent to AI.
Um, all right, let's see what it did. <laughs> may or may not have worked. Uh, worth saying, again, it's coming. Okay, so important sentences and their significance. Somebody else want to read this for me? If you don't mind. The zoom in, sorry. Okay. Since 73, 1973, when Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger adroitly excluded the Soviets from a say in Arab-Israeli diplomacy in the aftermath of the October War, the sentence is important because it outlines a significant event in international politics, indicating a shift in power. Washington's monopolized external We can power. probably read it, I think. Yeah, now that we see how it's set up. Yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Successive presidents who use that so it's not really answering the question. Well, let's see if it does. In order to fully comprehend the answer, it's important to understand the term October War. The October War, also known as the Yom Kippur War, was a significant event in Middle East history. In addition to your Egypt and Syria launching a coordinated assault on Israel on the holiest day of the Jewish calendar in October 73, other Arab states also participated. On the international stage, the war also marked a significant power shift as U.S. presidents extended their influence over Middle East power, furthering the U.S. position and limiting Soviet involvement. Additionally, the phase final status peace refers to a conclusive agreed upon resolution in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Given your interest in Yom Kippur, I invite you to reread the text with this information. And as you do, consider the implications and the impacts of the October War on international diplomacy. Yeah, so it's not getting to the, the rhetorical decision to say October War rather than Yom Kippur War, right? No. I'd also say that the, the, that the, the idea, I can't remember what the exact words, that, that the US, successive U.S. presidents have continue to, 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 to avoid final status talks. I mean, Clinton literally won a Nobel Prize for what was regarded as final status talks. I, I'm not defending him or those talks, but it seems like a controversial paragraph, a controversial idea, and AI in this case didn't at all, didn't at all question, you know, that, 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 that the facticity of that or, or, or add any yeah. historical data. Yeah, let's resubmit. Well, wasn't there one of the AI assistants? Wasn't there like an ask the author something? Because yes. it yeah. seems it you could try. Yeah, yeah. Because that might be interesting. Yeah, because this seems more like a stylistic choice you know, or like a rhetorical device. You know, why would we use October War versus? Yeah. Are Are you on there yet? Because you could try that while I'm resubmitting. Okay. Or we could just jump. But okay. Let's see what it came up with here. It's a little <laughs> hard. I just love. I just, just asked. I just asked OpenAI to find a person, a historical person, or anybody who used the term, and it said, um, it "said who said it was?" Um, yeah, Anwar Sadat is the term apparently. I'm going to go see. You see October War. Yeah. yeah, one prominent speaker. The guy who actually started the war. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was going to say. So there you have. The, there you go, Jack. <laughs> go yeah, figure. Right? He he, well, turned, you, he won a Nobel Prize too. He turned out to be a pretty good guy. But uh, but, but the the Paul, when you resubmitted, it did yeah. say. Yeah. Do you want to read that first paragraph? Because yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. Or I'll read it. So here it is. The war is known as October War in the Arab world and the Yom Kippur world in Israel. Oh. Highlighting the region's that's, deep historical and political divisions. That's uh, that's a great that's great A plus. I mean, partly because it reveals. I mean, this 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 the author is choosing to use the Arab world nomenclature, which is yeah. an interesting thing to learn. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And this was the resubmit, Paul. Right. Yes. So, right. So. Getting beyond the mindset, and, and certainly, you know, Rollins' kids understand, I totally understand it's a 45-minute period and you're doing it in the last 20 minutes, all that, right? But getting beyond the mindset of, oh, AI did this and it's AI is really stupid, right? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but maybe also if you change your question, you resubmitted, you really thought, you know, you really worked with it, 
it would give you something that's useful, right? Just perhaps. Holy Grass Passage, I'm just still reading. Okay, I'm going to submit that one. So here's the thing. We're doing this as a group. Here's um, you, uh, Jack, you have some thoughts or others may also. You can go in and reply to what the AI gave us and like continue the conversation that way. That's one way to go here. Um, and we're like, learning, when we do that, we're learning not the AI. <laughs> yeah. Or we don't think the AI is learning. You mean when you reply? Yeah, when we reply to an, the comment and not comment, it's just within that comment. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. just okay. it's just it's just replying to that text. Now, <laughs> and this is a change I made about a week ago. Um, when you hit reply with AI, it takes into consideration the original paragraph, the reply, and then your question. So it does get a little complicated. Oh, and you say you can, reply with AI. Yeah, then you can. Okay. Go back to a thinking partner and choose. Okay. And it pulls in. Previously, it was just pulling in the the reply itself or the comment. Now it's pulling in the original text too. But sorry, um, Kylie, did you get any further with that one? I did. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure how to make it bigger, but very similar to what we have already. Depending on where you come from or your political leanings, the nomenclature can change. Using October War attempts to create a neutral ground encompassing all the players in the conflict without associating it directly with any particular religious or national sentiment. Hmm. Cool, cool. Do you maybe submit that one and that then we'll... Author? Can I... Okay, it's still in the little box. I see... I have my question. It says resubmit or AI to edit, and then it says start conversation. Do I click? Yeah, start, start conversation? conversation, and then okay. it'll come up. In, yep, on the right side. Okay. Sorry, Christina, what was your question? I just wanted to clarify which one she yeah. used. I think she called it, it was ask the, the, but I guess I can see it. Once you submit, then I can see it. I just did, so you might need to refresh the page if you don't see it. Because, yeah, the question was, why use the term October War as opposed to the Yom Kippur War? Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we do another use case? Um, David, what, well, you were talking about something in the seventh paragraph? Um, yes, and it also... Um... So linked back Christina, to, she used the author simulator. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, that was the um, it was the comment the about sentence. a negotiated piece. Um, and I'm, and what we're trying to test tonight is how do you go from your question to choosing a thinking partner? And you were saying something about wanting a summary. Can you say um, that again? Yeah. Well, I will, I was just noting that trying to understand how to negotiate peace can be carved out. And my understanding, the understanding I bring to this is that a negotiated peace means going back to the two state solution and Israel addressing or accommodating lands it dot in 67 and how in the world will that unfold? Um, and so reading, reading this sentence, I immediately thought, well, I want to get, a, I want to get an updated understanding of what the history of those negotiations has been. Um, and I might ask the AI to give me some summary to refresh my understanding so that I could sort of look at this question again. Um, I suppose ultimately we could ask it to behave like a diplomat and explain how it might negotiate something as contested and fraught and full of trauma as this piece of land. But at the outset, I think I would just be trying to get myself, get a refresher on just what the history of the efforts have been over the- Can I ask, can I, sorry. Uh... 
What is the history behind these negotiations between the Palestinians and yeah, Israel? Yeah, give, give me a give me a two hundred word refresher on the history of. Well, yeah, are you you type? Okay, I I I chose the Newshound tutor. Okay, and I'm just trying to think that what. So, trying to the pedagogical moment that I'm trying to, yes. and you're helping all of us think about is going from a, a student's real question as they're reading to a thinking partner. I have to know, as a teacher, I have to know that there's a news hound there and what the news hound is going to do, right? So I can say, hey, given your question, why don't you try the news hound, mm. right? So let's look at what it gave us. Can you read uh, through that for us? Are you supposed to be sharing because I can't see? Uh, yeah, I stopped sharing and I didn't know I did that. <laughs> Thank you. Start. From, from a, David, I think that's a super intelligent comment. And from a student's point of view, I might say, uh, I mean, well, okay, let's see what this says. Can you read it, Jack? Do you mind? Uh, the history of negotiations between Palestinians and Israelis is com a complex one stemming from a long-held dispute over territory, identity, and faith. The conflict is often traced back to the late 19th century when Zionist Jews facing anti-Semitism in Europe began a, the movement for the creation of their own national state in what was then Palestine, an Arab-majority territory of the Ottoman Empire. Tensions began to escalate in the early half of the 20th century, especially with the 1947 United Nations Partition Plan that proposed the creation of two states, one Arab and one Jewish in Palestine. Jews accepted the plans, but the Arab nations and Palestinians rejected it. The next year, in 1948, the State of Israel was established despite objections, which led to the first Arab-Israeli war, also known as the War of Independence for Israelis or the Nakba catastrophe, catastrophe for Palestinians. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were expelled from from or fled their homes during the war. And this event is one of the most contentious points in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict today. Several wars and uprisings or intifadas have occurred since then. And numerous attempts at peace negotiations have been made with the most noted ones being the Camp David Accords, 1978, Oslo Accords, 1993, and the Camp David Summit, 2000. Each of these endeavors has established, has attempted to establish a framework for peace, often with the idea of a two-state solution where it, Israel and an independent Palestinian Palestine could coexist. However, these negotiations have often crumbled due to disagreements over key issues like borders, refugees, security, control of Jerusalem, and Israeli uh, settlements in occupied territories. Today's negotiations continue to grapple with these historical and contemporary issues with new challenges such as the status of Gaza and internal divisions among the Palestinians and Israelis themselves, adding further complications. Relating, relating these ongoing negotiations to other global conflicts, it's evident that durable peace often requires historical reckoning, mutual recognition, and compromise. Achieving this in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict will require sustained, patient negotiation and a willingness to con confront painful historical realities. I'd, I'd vote for AI over any Israeli or Palestinian uh, you know, politician right now. I know, I was gonna say, that's, a, that's an A minus right there. <laughs> What do you mean? Say more. Well, I mean, yeah. As Jack, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna start conversation so we have it. Go ahead, yeah. As Jack was reading, I was everything was sort of clicking again about what I've I've absorbed over I don't know how long, and it was remarkably lucid. And that it was also there was thinking about AI and what kind of thinking it was doing. This is sort of a softball for AI, right? Because the amount of stuff that's been written about it in this regard on the internet is. Mm -hmm. and the chance to summarize and not really take a position but reframe is you know where ai spends all its time training itself in the gym of ai somewhere mm -hmm. and uh it's it, it, it did it was a really nice summary and if i were a teacher saying could you summarize the if we're all in agreement class that this the, the a negotiate yeah what what would you do next if if this was class well, that's a good question. I guess the question is how to complicate it. I mean, this is the thing that seems always to be happening with AI. How do you complicate? Sometimes it's very 
sort of milk toast comments, but this is a very complicated situation. It described all the all the complexities very well. And so the question would be, and 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 what and how might we go about this? Can we dig into the the current the current political situation and the rise of the um, the ultra orthodox in Israel, or what are the conditions that are going to make negotiation especially difficult this time? Um, I wouldn't exactly say that last paragraph was anodyne, but you know it was very upbeat and very optimistic the way AI is trained. Um, uh, was nice Jake was raising his hand. I just wanted to oh, good. before you go ahead, Paul. Jake. Jake, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. You know, I would um, I would ask AI, can you make two additional versions, one written from a biased Israeli view and one written from a biased Palestinian view and see nice. what they come up with. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, it, it's a really big part of detangling this for students is, you know, who's speaking at every turn. I mean, in America, it's like, you know, the adults are the children and you know when we're teaching you know how to parse uh information you know the source is so important you know i i don't care if it's the new york post or the new york times or you know the washington post you know they all have a history of uh you know different uh, authors and, pr and perspective and perspective is really important yeah we haven't asked about this author in there kind of history of writing on this topic. I like the idea of the two, of, of, of creating two, a centrist and then the, the a Palestinian perspective and an Israeli perspective. Because again, every tweet you read, every article you read is, is, is overtly or covertly trying to push you in one or the other directions, I think. Mm -hmm. Preparing students for yeah. that would be interesting. Jackie, you created a one where three rabbis argue about the text, right? Yeah, you, I, I don't see it in your in your in your category in your it's, on your list now. Do you have? Um, it's, it's a Talmudic just, one. It's a Talmudic one. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, yeah. Well, it, it's it's there. It's probably in yours. I just okay, right for the first introduction. To, to I, it, it, but yes. No, but but the reason I went back to thinking about that one, I mean, you can still use it, by the way, but and is um, what you're suggesting is similar to that, right? We'd have to define the three characters and have them have them argue something, and that would be a simulation, right? I I worry a little bit, like, is how different is? Are we doing what the fake, um, you know? things on Twitter are doing when we do that. The bots. But probably not, right? Yeah. yeah. But I, I worry about this. The the David, I let you're you're calling it anodyne was sort of like nobody agrees with this. The Palestinian is like my my people that are being are being driven out of their home. My people are being occupied. My people are being kept in prison for 40 years. And you expect us not to be angry and to be behave like and 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 Israeli says, you know, we we we've we face nothing but enemies from overwhelming odds against 15 Arab states. How do you expect us? So you never you 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 have to be ready for those voices um, because that's that's what you're going to confront in the world as, as a, you know as, a, as part of the learning process. It feels like no one's going to speak as reasonably as this AI just did. Mm -hmm. Right. To Jake's point about having having someone who feels very very strongly on one position or the other just to get a flavor of what that perspective is going to be yeah mm, yeah but also you know if um i teach middle school so you know if yeah. if i would bring up the subject it would be kids coming really fresh and new day <clears throat> and you know um it's just you know everybody has a has a, a strong point of view so you know, for them to be able to see side by side, you know, I mean, maybe you do it like a uh, Socratic seminar, um, but for them to be able to see how each side kind of manipulates the same narrative, you know, to uh, to editorialize or to, um, you know, advocate, you know, for their side, 
it's it it it's important for them to say, oh look, they took this out, you know. Oh look, they don't mention that, you know. Look, they they're you know they're using a lot of adjectives, you know. I mean, the this this last twenty four hours with the hospital, um, you know, you you literally have both sides blaming the other side for this, you know, bomb attack, and um, you know, there's also there's also which, which team? What's that? Paul? Sorry. I should say which team did it. I just mocking. Yeah, some of that. And, and, yeah, and yeah, and you know, the, and there's like, there's also a, a perspective where it doesn't matter who did it. You know, what really matters is that all those lives were lost because of this conflict, and you know, you can go back and forth, and you know how illustrative it is that they're both denying it and they're both blaming the other, and the conflict is escalating, and. And uh, you know, mass death happened. You know, so um, you know, I think there's there's great lessons to be learned. E you know, even in the kind of like um, neutral zone, you know, regardless of you know whose side you take, you know, about the about the the harm and the destruction. Uh, one, yeah. this is kind of a random thought. I don't know if it's useful, but we actually know. Um, well, she's actually an American, but she's married to um, an Arab Bedouin, and they live in Israel. So they're Arab Israelis living in the mm -hmm. Negev. And like, I, I almost want to have like a perspective like that, too, like someone who lives there, um, but isn't directly in the conflict you know, in the same way. I don't know. Hmm. That's not a random thought, but it's just like another voice. That that may that might get back to the tech sets as opposed to AI. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe we could find a, a narrative by somebody like that. Yeah, actually that she recommended set. a couple, so I'll look at those. Right. Yeah. That might be a tech set thing, right. All right. What did we learn tonight? Oh, <laughs> Any great, kind of oh, yeah. yeah. I think this is great. I'm actually getting ready to start a new unit. I teach 101 at the university, and we're mm -hmm. getting ready to teach um, a unit called Writing to Negotiate, mm -hmm. and going to be teaching them about stasis theory and how to look at two different sides of a conflict or a perspective and negotiate those and hopefully come up with something in the middle and this my entire time we're going over this tonight is if i can get this ready in time this ai thinking partner would be amazing um the same the same uh sentence three in paragraph seven i used uh, while we were talking i was kind of messing around with some of the ai partners and i used the burning questions one and it uh, i asked it you know what are some potential suggestions for you say we need to arrive to um, and understanding what are some maybe potential suggestions. And it didn't exactly give me an answer to that. Like it didn't give me specific suggestions. Um, and I think maybe using a different AI partner, I could have, but it gave me steps for here are things that you can do to try and come up with those negotiations and those specific, um, those suggestions are what you're looking for. Um, so again, thinking as a college student or a one-on-one student, this is a great starting point if I'm going, well, I have no idea where to start, or I don't even know how to think about this. This just, it didn't give the answer, but it gave me a really good idea about where I can go and where I can start to look for some answers. Hmm. Cool. Hmm. Cool. Thanks for playing with mm -hmm. that, that way. Cool. And it, it, it does make me think that the <laughs> what I've seen that now three teachers do um, is very similar to what you did. Let me just pick one and see what happens, right? And so maybe that's a, a, a reasonable approach too. But as we get to know them, we might be able to say, hey, you could try that one or and or we could say, we don't have one where there's you know the three extremes and then somebody in the middle have a debate about this text. Let's let's build that one so we could build that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'd like to get a little bit more familiar with the Moloch versus the Moloch. I keep thinking Moloch versus Moloch. The Moloch and Moloch. Um, That's the TV show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I missed several TTTs in a row, so I think I'm a little behind on sort of the categories, but just like how, how that organization structure might help with or approaching a complicated text or complicated discussion, I'm not sure. But it seems yeah, like I mean, you're putting some energy into so. Their 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 picture over there on the left, as you look at the screen. Yeah, is that a video? Uh, if you click on that picture, that goes to the article that they published in June and rewrote in September. Okay. You click on the title, you can go to that. But then, yeah, on YouTube, there's they they have they have um, videos that characterize these categories as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, um, one thing. Yeah, yeah, very briefly. Again and again, I, whenever we I come into these conversations, I'm just amazed how much more I know coming out of them, and um, it's like I think I'm getting about AI or about Hamas, uh, all of or both. I mean, it, this is a comment about AI. I think I know more as a result of having the AI as this buffer between us and the computer. I mean, I've been in writing groups, certainly, where we're talking and we're encountering each other's writing literally with paper or with text. I've followed annotations and so forth. But um, when there's sort of active real-time space where this partner is sort of throwing something out, it's not Christina, it's not Jack or Kylie or Jake. It's, it's, just, it's just another point of reference and it, it stimulates a level of thinking that's different or I should say I don't know if it's a different level but it's another perspective that's very activating so I, I'm continue to be struck by that and uh, this whole learning partners business sets that emotion I mean I think it's it's a little bit wild and free range and getting it sort of organized so it can feel sequential or potentially directed is really the goal but it's remarkable how much energy it brings to the thinking process. This strikes me again and again. Feels different. Oh, I feel that way too. Thank you for that <laughs> summary. Um, I just want to say, we, yeah, go ahead. Jake, I'd love to, you know, maybe, I don't know, next week or something. Like, I'd love to think more about how you approach this kind of work with middle schoolers. Like, what the, because I keep thinking about older students. Um, and, you know, so that perspective from middle school, I would just love to hear more about if you are playing with it. I mean, I, you probably... Uh, Jake, have you talked to your kids at all about it? Or... Um, yeah, well, I have an advisory... I'm an art teacher, but yeah. um, I have an advisory period, and um, last Friday, you know, we showed some news clips, Um and, uh, you know, the kids, I noticed, you know, they really, you know, look intently, um, most of them. <laughs> and, um, you know, there, there was um, not, there, there wasn't really like questions or curiosity. It was just like, um, you know, they were just observing it all quietly. And, um, you know, I think they were taking in the, you know, the death and destruction um, you know, when, when you say a terrorist attack and you talk about the types of numbers that we're talking about, um, you know, it really catches their attention, um, you know, and breaks through a lot of, you know, kind of like middle school fog or haze. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I haven't done anything meaningful. We haven't done any lessons or assignments. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't really get too much of that in my art curriculum, but we have great social studies teachers um, and, uh, you know, they usually plan units like long ahead of time. And so it's not very reactive to current events, especially like something like this, which is just unfolding and it's going to be lasting for months, if not years. So, um, you know, I'm sure everybody will be playing catch up for a long time. Mm -hmm. that sounds like you've started something, but yeah, cool. Yeah. So, um, the text set that you would put together for seventh and eighth graders would be different than the one we started. So that's worth saying. And the Learning Network did publish, I think, three days ago, a really wonderful article about 
you know, what to teach for this with for lots different grade of levels, you mean? Stuff. Uh, they they refer to different grade levels. It, it, it's an article that, okay. with with lot with lots of links and things. Um, cool, cool. Thank you all. Great. Thank, Thank you. Um, okay. We'll talk. Thanks, Paul. Thanks again. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody.